Welcome to this CUBE conversation with Eric Herzog, also known as Zogginstore, the CMO of Infinidat, where we will discuss how Infinidat is aiming to accelerate the future of enterprise storage and cybersecurity. Really exciting stuff, especially when you look at the proliferation of data platforms and the innovation that is really going on here. So welcome on board Zogginstore, and you know, thanks for joining us again. Rob, how you doing? Love to be on the Cube. Oh, well, we, we love having you here. And I, I think it's always really exciting, especially when you have big news. And I, I think, again, as we look at how data storage and silicon have all become sexy again this year with AI accelerating that, uh, I think there's a lot going on that you have a number of announcements going on, probably the largest in Infinidat's recent history for that matter. Oh yeah, it's probably the largest in seven or eight years, and it's a combination of a brand new system, what we call the G4, coupled with four separate software pillars that are all happening at the same time. And of course, we are really a software company. We do no custom ASICs, we do no custom array controllers, we have patents around our hardware design, but we just use off-the-shelf components. So our magic fairy dust and our value is all around our software. So this brand new platform will use what we call Infuse OS, which is our operating system, which has a number of subcomponents, which are all being updated and modernized with this launch, which will be on May 22nd. Yeah, and I, I think what was really interesting is that because you've been out there talking to customers about the new forms and form factors, and it's been on your roadmap, what are some of the interesting use cases customers have been coming to you for? And kind of explain the G4 and kind of that new form factor as well. So the G4 is, ground up brand new platform. We are using AMD's chips. We have uh, the new PCI generation. We have the new DDR genera D DRAM generation with DDR. And we've designed this whole thing. We have both a hybrid and an all flash. And one of the new things we've done is taken our high-end enterprise solution and figure out a way to create a high-end enterprise solution with triple active controllers, our 100% availability, all the features, all the software of Infuse OS, our InfiniSafe, our Infiniverse, all of it into a 14 rack U configuration, which can be delivered either in our rack or you can buy it and install it in your own rack. So it opens up new use cases for us because we've traditionally sold a full boat rack. Although we have partially populated models, you still have to buy the full boat rack from us to ship that. This is now a 14 rack U, which can come in the rack, or we know most of our customers are looking to have it in their own racks and put it together themselves and install it. Right, and I, this to me, when you mentioned this to me and we were being briefed on it, it, it just opened itself up to, hey, I, I need to put it out at the edge. I need to have another place or I have a smaller remote office that I need to have that kind of availability and I'm doing, maybe I'm doing AI on top of it where I need really to know that this is not gonna go down and that it's safe and that it's secure and I want to put it in that closet over there and kind of thing. And this would seem like that kind of fits those use cases as well. Well, we have multiple use cases already because we happen to have a lot of orders already because our large customers certainly saw the roadmap. So they knew we were coming out with it. So they've already placed orders for something that we haven't yet. We're announcing on the 22nd of May. But the thing uh, that we've seen is, A, some of our very large customers who haven't fitted out in the data center are opening new offices or new facilities and they're using a colo okay and you pay for floor space so even though we have all these high-end features that they love in the core data center it's like well is there any way you could shrink that so now we've taken everything in our high-end systems that are full boat shrank it into 14 rack so this is not a mid-range technology all it is a high-end high-end enterprise our focus as you know is the global fortune 2000 um, and cloud providers and now you could put it in a colo or Let's say I'm opening up a bunch of new factories, but they're not all big. So don't think a giant car factory, but think some sort of smaller factory. And I'm going to either A, use a colo, or B, I'm going to have, if you will, a data center closet that's pretty small. I'm going to have a couple servers in there, a little networking, and I need some storage to go in there. And they want it remote. They don't want to be going back and forth to the core. That's another use case for it. So we see that. Uh, again, at the edge level, whether it be in a manufacturing sort of site or other office where they're going to do it. So it could be a remote engineering office where they're going to do AI or other development, but it's not going to be at the giant, you know, megaplex offices. It's going to be some office center 
in another state or another country, and it's small, but they need the storage. So those are the use cases we're seeing, and we have had a few, quite honestly, who have their own racks already in their core data center said, well, wait, we can fill up our own racks. Okay, we want that instead of your full rack, because then we have a partially empty rack. So that's a way for them to optimize rack floor power cooling inside a core data center. So really, all four of those use cases work with this new 14 rack use system, which we call the G4 1400 cloud. And, and I think one of the interesting things that I found with this whole thing is that, like you said, it's still the same OS across everything. It's still your core IP that can talk between the different versions, right? And that was one of the keys, I think, that if I'm a customer and I'm looking for investment protection and I'm already an existing customer and I've moved to one of the 14s or to the new G4 platform, is that I can use it with my existing threes, generation threes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, work with Gen 3. Our Gen 3 customers, if they're on support and maintenance, get a free upgrade to the new version, which is Infuse OS V8. And we're also announcing the extension of our Infuse OS Cloud Edition, which is a full version of our cloud instantiation, our full software, currently today only in AWS, but now also in Azure. So it gives us that hybrid multi-cloud, what you guys call the super cloud. Yes. And so they can get it at the edge or a colo, right? They can get it in core data center. They can take the small unit and you, you consume their existing rack space if that's what they want to do. And they can go out to Amazon or they can go out to Azure with Infuse OS Cloud Edition. And it's all the exact same software. Everything's the same. InfiniSafe, our cyber software, works in the colo, works in the small closet. It works in the giant data center. And it works, by the way, in Azure and, and also in AWS. And what, what's interesting about that is people could use those instantiations as a remote data center to actually bring copies of their data because you do, you're able to use InfiniSafe to be able to do that and to be able to bridge those different locations in a hybrid way so they can protect to without having to have two of their own physical data centers or something like that. Yeah, well, InfiniSafe works as a software play. It's included with the Infuse OS. So when you put infuse out, when you put a, a 1400 in a colo or the small you know data center office if you will and you put it in the core infinisafe works on that and then if you put it out in Amazon or put it out in Microsoft it's the infuse OS and infinisafe comes for free with all the feature sets and we've added some new features with this launch as well what what are those new features that you're going down and adding so we've done a couple things so the uh, real big one is automatic cyber protection, we call ACP. It's not an additional piece of software. It's really reconfiguring what we do in our reference design and creating some scripting that allows InfiniSafe to take cues through APIs from SIM events, SOAR events, if you're just using a syslog. So if you're doing the poor man's cybersecurity, you don't step up with a major package, you can do it that way. And of course, for guys that are really into it, the old days they had a knock, now they have a sock. So in any of those, what it will do is we can configure it so it'll automatically generate an immutable snapshot. So here's an example. The Cube Wikibon, Silicon Angle, you're a customer, and you have our hybrid, the G4 hybrid, and it is 17.1 petabytes effective on the hybrid side. And so now you decide you're going to do four snapshots a day, okay? Okay because you're worried about a cyber attack. But you also have IBM Q Radar SIM or Microsoft or Splunk, right, to manage the overall cybersecurity of your data center. So now you've taken a snap two hours ago, and your next snap isn't for another four hours. You're doing four a day, so six. Six by four is what your normal thing is. So if any of those pieces of software see some sort of intrusion, some sort of warning on their side, through the API, it'll come to us, and instead of waiting for the ne for the next four, six, 12 hours, if you're doing it twice a day for sake of work, it'll automatically generate an immutable snap. And we can either configure it that you can continue to generate immutable snaps in, if you will, a new schedule. So the regional schedule was twice a day, four times a day, six times a day. But this way, A, you have no gap when a threat is detected, not by the storage, not by our InfiniSafe cyber detection, which also can help do that, but by the data center-wide software that you have or the SOC, if you've got that, and then it automatically will give you that immutable snapshot. So it helps you reduce the threat window. Do you want to sit there 
if you're on the 12-hour cycle for sake of argument, and it finished an hour ago, you still got 11 hours. So now Splunk tells you there's an attack, or Microsoft tells you, do you want to wait for another 11 hours? How about taking a snap like right now? And that way it could help you reduce the threat window. So it's an automated process. It's all done through API. Uh, there's no impact because the way we do our snapshots, there's no impact on performance. So it's not like, okay, if I take the snap, you know, my Oracle database is going to slow down. My SAP HANA is going to slow down. Oh my God, that Mongo database, it's highly, tr it doesn't impact any of that, but you could help again, reduce that threat window. So that's new on the InfiniSafe cyber detection, which are our capability of de helping detect malware, ransomware, or other threats. Uh, we now have a version that is available for VMware. We didn't have that before. We could do files, databases, LUNs, file systems, and volumes, but you couldn't do VMware. So now we've added VMware to that as well. And we're announcing right now our cyber detection is on our primary storage, the G4 InfiniBox, the G4 All Flash InfiniBox, and also, of course, back to the installed base. But we're going to have not had it on our purpose-built backup appliance, the InfiniGuard, which, by the way, happens to use the Infuse OS. And so now that is going to be available in the second half of the year. So a fair amount around cyber between having it on our InfiniGuard, uh, what we're doing with VMware, and definitely automated cyber protection, ACP, really is a boon because it interfaces with cybersecurity software, which is not from the storage vendor. It's from someone else. That is a cybersecurity expert. That's their job. That's why the data center bought it or why the enterprise bought it. And now we're talking with them together. Yeah, I, I think what always strikes me about Infinidat is that it's really software and it's software driven. driven. It has APIs. I, I think you, you talked about uh, the cyber defense for VMware as well, the Infinisafe cyber defense for VMware. I think what was also interesting to me, and I, I think in our discussion before this, was the pricing model. I, I thought you had a really unique pricing model that allowed people to protect what they need to protect because not every VM is created equal or has the same right. value in that. Why don't you tell people about that? Sure. So on Infinisafe, base Infinisafe, all those feature functions, immutable snapshots, logical air gapping, local, remote, or both, creating a fence forensic environment because if you do have an attack, you want to restore a known good copy. You don't want to restore a bad copy. And our guarantees, where we guarantee in writing immutability of the snapshot, and we also guarantee RTO recovery time. Recovery time on InfiniBox and InfiniBox SSA is one minute or less. On the InfiniGuard, it's 20 minutes or less. And in fact, on the InfiniGuard, we just happened to do a cyber resilience end user demand gen webinar a couple months ago. We recovered a 20 petabyte Commvault backup repository in 13 minutes. Last quarter, we did one and we recovered in 11 minutes and 55 seconds, a 20 petabyte Veeam backup data set. On the InfiniBox, we recovered 200 terabytes in three seconds. So that's all guaranteed and that's all free. On the cyber detection side, we do have a fee and that fee is based on capacity that you scan. So in the example where Wikibon Cube and SiliconANGLE all bought our 17.1 effective capacity G4 hybrid, you can say, we only want to scan 100 terabytes. So that's what we bill you for. We don't bill you for 17.1. We only bill for what we scan. Yeah. And so that way you can determine, wait, maybe one array, you really need to scan everything. Okay. Maybe on another array, it's nothing. Maybe on a third array, it's 100 terabytes. Maybe on another one, it's half a petabyte. But the point is, we only bill you for what you scan. And the base InfiniSafe, which obviously works with the cyber detection version, that's free. All that stuff, you you don't pay a dime for that. You only pay for the scanning. And again, it's whatever you want to scan. If you want if you want to do VMware data sets, great. Yeah. If you don't, you don't have to. You pick what you want, and we only charge you for the capacity you scan, no matter how big the array is. It's only what you scan that we charge you for. And and I think also in addition to this, you also have uh, some enhancements to Infiniverse as well. And why don't you talk about those? Sure. So Infiniverse is a software play. Um, it gathers ungodly amounts of telemetry data, just an incredible amount. Our customers use it all the time. As you know, we provide technical advisors for every account at no charge. Some of the other guys do too, but they charge for it. We don't charge right. for it. And then we do level three tech support. We have no level one or level two. You go right to level three. 
because of who our customers are. So all three of those constituents use Infiniverse extensively. What we're doing now is looking at it as an infrastructure consumption model services. So what that means is we're going to be more proactive. So let's take an easy example. We have a technology called capacity on demand. It's a way to buy the product. You pay for half of it up front. We would ship Wikibon Cube, Silicon Angle, the full array, but you only pay for half. But the whole thing is loaded. And as you add 100 terabytes or 200 terabytes, we would charge you. And you own it because it's CapEx, right? It's not storage as a service. You would buy it. And it's basically think of it as a way as doing a down payment and then doing deferred payments. Well, currently right now, the only way we can track that is we have to go into Infiniverse and look. And we actually have somebody who does that across hundreds of arrays. Okay. But now with what we're doing with new version of Infiniverse, that will all be proactive. Automatically generate a port. Send it to him. Send it to the account team. Send it to the channel partner. Send it to our technical advisors. Send it to the customer. Hey, guy, because our software, our, our solutions are known for just going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny and rarely needing to be managed. So if they don't need to manage it, they're not trying to take advantage of us and not pay us for COD. Right. But it's not automated. So if they got a note saying, hey, they'll say, oh, yeah, okay, you're right. We are. And But it all come out of Infiniverse. So that um, same thing with our snapshot technology. Right now, you can see every snap. Are they read, write? Are they immutable? What are they? Okay. But you have to go into Infiniverse. In this next pass coming and the future passes, Everything will be automated. You say, yeah, let us know. And guess what? It'll tell you. Here's how many snaps on this box. Here's how many snaps on these are InfiniSafe ones. These are read write ones, blah, 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 blah. And so all of that level of automation is sitting there with all that telemetry data. But right now, it's great. We can see power on every array we've ever sold. How much power is being used? Yeah. You can see the week, the month, the quarter, and the year. But you have to go into InfiniWorks. What if it automatically sent you, Rob? A note once a quarter and said, here's what you're using. And by the way, here's the 12 arrays you own. Boom, boom, boom. And that's the telemetry data, which we already have. Right now, you have to go in and look at all 12 one by one. So with the coming version, all of this level of um, infrastructure consumption automation will be built in. Yeah. And I, I think one of the things we kind of glossed over is the fact that going to the G4, going to the AMD Epics uh, cores and think many more cores in a smaller configuration, more so people can be more efficient, more green with how they're doing this. Yeah. I think you've had a lot of this where you've seen and been able to go and to ungodly amounts of storage racks where people doing things previously and actually bring them down. Yes. So we've had that. In fact, we call it E squared, economic advantage and environmental advantage. You get both. So let's give you an example. With the current generation, the third generation, we have a customer who is all flash with a competitor, 454 tiles. Now, with our third generation all flash, they have 54 tiles running every single same workload. So you're saving on watts, slots, power, floor space, IT management. And of course, when they switched to us, they had to recycle 454 tiles. So they're on third gen. When they go to G4, they'll recycle 50 floor tiles, not 450. And as we all know, networking gear, server gear, and storage gear is filled with tox. So this is not like taking your newspapers and your bottles out and putting them in the recycling bin, right? Which is free, right? Right. In this case, you pay big money for that. So that level of consolidation gives you not only less, less power, less rack, less floor, the OPEX advantages of, of the operational resources, but it also gives you a better carbon footprint and when you do retire it, instead of retiring 454 tiles, you're only retiring 50. And that, and because recycling is very expensive, A, you're recycling less so it's greener, but it also is very expensive. It's specialty recycling for computer technology. And we just shrunk that bill too. So you get less that you're recycling, which is better environmentally, but at the same time, the cost to do it just dropped. So you have environmental advantage and economic advantage, E squared. Yeah. And you're even taking this further, right? Because you're looking at it from G4 on, you're going to have these in-place upgrades. Why don't you talk to that? Yeah. So what we're doing is, as part of the Infiniverse, we'll be doing what we call Infiniverse Mobius. So what we'll be doing is you'll be able to purchase as part of the deal, a controller upgrade program. And that controller upgrade program, when the G5 comes out after the G4, you can keep all the media if you want to. And all you do is swap out the controllers. That's all you'll need to do. Now, you may do that. 
You may not, right? If you choose to, you know, basically swap the whole thing out, well, guess what? You've already, if you will, prepaid an amount, so you'll owe the balance. So there's a way to do it if you really want a whole new thing three to four years out, or if you want to just swap the controllers. And by the way, in the mid-range, this is very common, in the mid-range market, but in the high-end market, no one's really doing it. So we'll be the first guys in the high-end market with a controller upgrade program. And so that'll be unique, but people are used to these controller upgrade pro programs in the mid-market. So we'll follow that model. Um, there's the base price of an array in the mid-market, and then if you want the controller upgrade program, there's a premium that you pay. We'll follow the exact same model, except we'll be doing it on a high-end technology, which right now no one's doing. So it's, you know, if you will, borrowing from an industry sphere, except it's not in our segment of the industry sphere. It's in the segment below us. So we're taking that, and we, we've had very good feedback from customers on this. Very good feedback. Yeah, it helps, it helps the customers, especially when they're going through and doing their sustainability planning as well, because they can upcycle that and keep the media in place and grow as, as they go through that. So, so last word, what, what, what do you want to say, you know, to everybody out there, you know, I'm pumped on this, but you know, what, what would you say to them, you know, channel partners, customers, you know, cloud providers? Well, this is the biggest thing we've had in seven years, but it's not just about a new array platform. It's about all this new software, cyber threat, 9.5 trillion to enterprises, according to cybersecurity analysts, not storage geeks like me. Well, guess what? If you can make storage part of your corporate cybersecurity strategy and have that work with other pieces of software, that's magic. So in addition to getting this new platform that's up to twice as fast as your third generation, or in the case of um, you know people who don't buy us yet, the fact that we've got something that's that ungodly fast, it's already been documented by many storage analysts, as well as you guys, that no one has the as low a latency as we do. So take advantage of that. But then all this other software, whether it be the controller upgrade program, the Infiniverse Mobius, whether it be what Infiniverse software is going to be doing for you, whether we can do with cyber detection for your VMware environments, that's all rolled together. So it's a very exciting launch. It's huge for us. It's huge for our customers. And quite honestly, we have a tremendous amount of backlog from the people who see the roadmaps, right? The existing customers like, no, we're not buying the third gen anymore. We're, we're buying G4 and here's a purchase order. They're voting with their dollar. They're voting with their dollar. Yeah. So we see if this is a good move. We will be doing an end user event on June 5th. Um, and we'll be doing it two times. So we'll be doing it on a European friendly time and also on a time zone friendly for the Americas. Please check our website for that. And then in September, we'll be doing a global road show where we will take all this on the road. So we'd be more than happy for people to show up at the multiple C's. We'll be, and that also be published up on our website uh, a little bit later in uh, early Q3, you'll be able to see what's going on. Well, that's great. Uh, so thank you for coming on board and sharing this with us. Really appreciate it. Always, you know, fun to have you on board. Well, thank you. We love doing the cube. I just can't remember whether Dave told me, am I still number one in cube cube things or am I, have I slipped I to two or three? I, th I think you're still number one. Uh, I think you, I think you, you've done, done a few this past year that, uh, <laughs> kept you up, up, up in the upper echelon of, uh, people who've been on. So we really appreciate you being multiple alumnus of it and like uh, beyond beyond anybody else well we love the cube but you guys do a great job and the key thing is not just what you do for the vendor base like us but it really is what you do for the end users yeah. you guys have such strong end user connections and some of the other analyst firms they're great but they just mostly talk to the vendors yeah. you guys talk to the partners you talk to the vendors and you talk to the end users so you get the whole if you will the whole enchilada as we like to say in california you get the whole thing and for us, that's super valuable. That's why we love working with the Cube. Well, we thank you for that. And we, we at the, the Cube Research, formerly Wikibon, look at it as a, a, a badge of honor to be able to connect the dots because security, ransomware are two of the top things that we see as we go into RSA and as we go into kind of Cyber Month here. I, I think that this is perfectly timed uh, type of thing because that's what people are really worried about. And I think the Infinidat uh, announcements really match and marry up with that data that we're seeing from our partner at ETR as well. Well, thank you very much. We love it. And thank you for watching us break down Infinidat is how, and how we're accelerating the future of enterprise storage and cybersecurity right now on theCUBE, the leader in enterprise analysis and news.